So we're going to review historical period three from 1754 to 1800. Uh, we're going to review this cheat sheet. So if you uh, can pull up the cheat sheet on Google Classroom, uh, if you can print that out, you can print it out. If not, you can copy it down your notebook. Or if you want to just listen and watch this lecture, you can take notes from this. I'll, I'll read through it and add additional information to this. So uh, this is the first possible historical period for the AP test this year. And uh, first, we're going to start some topics to know. This is straight from the College Board 2017 onward. This is what they can test. Seven Years' War slash the French and Indian War. Uh, and I added results because that's kind of the main thing you need to know is the results of this war, right? France, gone from the eastern part of what will become the United States. Uh, England has full control over that territory now. Massive debt from England. And they're going to expect the colonists to pay for it because of the uh, situation uh, where they have to had to protect the colonists in this war. So that's kind of setting up the American Revolution, and that's the key part. Um, if you remember, we kind of one of one of our first looks at a, a DBQ was French and Indian War related. Um, the American Revolution. Uh, so I put causes and results, kind of the big piece of this. Um, go back through. If you have your notebook, uh, one of the things that we did way, way back when we did historical period three in the fall was uh, I had you do kind of a chart with all those different acts, Navigation Act, Molasses Act, Sugar Act, Quartering Act, Stamp Act, Townshend Act, Declaratory Acts, Intolerable Acts, etc. You know, all these things, right? Good pieces of information to know if you generally know what those are, know what each is. Uh, that's outside information you can bring in if you get something about the causes of the revolution or uh, for contextualization. If it's something after the revolution, um, it's a really good piece. Um, so that's kind of the causes, right? Uh, the sanitary neglect is gone. Uh, that had happened before. England was kind of neglecting some of the rules they had in place for trading, and they're going to to pull that and try to enforce it really hard. The colony's not going to react well uh, because they only have kind of virtual representation in England in Parliament and not actual physical representation, actual representation there. So no taxation without representation is a big cry. Uh, and we see this kind of ramp up over time and through some of these different acts, you know, a lot of them aren't enforced or a lot of them are overblown, but a lot of it's perception and uh, the perception, right? A lot of boycotting of English goods um, all the way through the Boston Tea Party, right? All these things lead to the American Revolution also. So we'll get into later some of the other causes. Uh, results of the American Revolution, obviously we have um, independence for America. They become this kind of world stage uh, piece. We do have a lot of debt, especially from the northern states. There's a lot of debt that they've accumulated through this war. We, we also start to see some... Um, uh, working together, trying to work these politics out of this. We'll get into that. Uh, the Articles of Confederation. Make sure you know kind of the weaknesses of that. We'll get into that. Uh, creation and ratification of the Constitution. I think that's something you're probably well versed in from 10th grade. Um, but, we'll, you know, we'll get into that. And uh, developing an American identity. So kind of, you know, this kind of goes to the American Revolution win, how we developed an identity uh, politically, how we developed a government identity. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. I don't think it's... Super important, but something that could come into play. And then immigration and migration within America. You know, a lot of this at, in this historical period is about slavery. Um, uh, African immigrants, or not immigrants, were brought over forcefully as slaves. Um, and migration, you know, moving westward, having some conflict with natives. We'll get into that a little bit. So let's hit the themes. Uh, American national identity is one of the themes. That kind of goes with that American identity piece. Um, so... You know, we kind of develop our identity after the French and Indian War, but before the Revolution, right? We start to work together. Um, some key pieces of evidence with this, the Albany Congress. Remember Ben Franklin uh, pushed with with the, with the snake and, you know, join or die, right? Let's get, the, let's get all these colonies together, start talking things out. You can also bring up pieces um, like the, the uh, Great Awakenings, the gatherings start happening. That'd be a good contextualization piece. Um, something that happened in the colonies that kind of brought them together. Uh, through this. Um, and then, you know, something like Sam Adams, the, the committees of correspondence, something we touched on briefly, briefly in the course in the fall, but something you can look up too for more information. Um, but, you know, Sam Adams did something very similar in the New England colonies trying to get together uh, a committee to uh, talk, talk things out of different colonies and have kind of a plan of action uh, moving forward past and in, into the revolution. Um, 
uh, you know, other things with the Stamp Act Congress, the Continental Congresses, right? These are working together. This is a national identity that we're building, uh, not just colonies. Um, and then by the end of this period, you know, who who are those American Americans, right? Who are citizens? Um, people with full rights, right? White, wealthy, land-owning men. Uh, that's it. You know, even women aren't considered citizens technically by 1800. Uh, that'll come pretty soon after. Um, so this is kind of in conflict with the Declaration of Independence, could be something that's uh, good to note. Um, next thing, politics and power. This is probably the big one for this period, right? The, I talked about the conflict with direct representation versus virtual representation and taxation. Um, Arctic Confederation, right? Weaken the federal government. You know, you had different states making treaties, different things. Remember, we talked about Georgia threatened to, you know, th threatened the, the different states and colonies threatened to secede uh, from each other. It was a big mess, you know, that this that this kind of occurred um, throughout. So, uh, Arctic Confederation, you know, uh, very weak. It didn't allow for this federal government structure that could actually keep things in line um, toward the end of the revolution. Um, so. Uh, make sure that constitution on the other side strengthens the federal government and make sure you know some of the specifics with that. Then the first party system, you know, we see federalists, anti-federalists, but uh, more importantly, kind of before that, right, Hamilton, Alexander Hamilton against Thomas Jefferson, you know, agrarian versus uh, big city, uh, national bank financier, right, versus kind of that small, you know, keep the government out. Uh, so you know, it's a piece of evidence, you know, from uh, the representation piece, Sons of Liberty, Boston Tea Party, you know, just the reaction to all those acts that we talked about before. Um, even the Olive Branch petition, sending a, a, a petition out to the king, hey, we're We'll, we'll come back as long as you do all these things. No, peace. He's, he's not going to go for peace. He thinks he can win. Um, makes you know, you know, the, the different compromises uh, within the Constitution. Uh, I think the three-fifths compromise I have on there, the Great Compromise, you know, um, something some we've gone over thoroughly, but if you have questions on that, let me know. Um, and then, you know, further on kind of politics, Alien and Sedition Acts with John Adams, um, you know, with him trying to kind of, you know, keep out uh, immigrants as well as, uh, try to punish people that oppose the government. And then, uh, the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions, which kind of got rid of these on Jefferson's end. And then Washington's farewell address, no entangling alliances, no political parties, right? Could, you know, if you get something from this period, good chance, uh, po politically good chance you'll get that document in the DBQ. Next theme, work exchange and technology. Uh, so the end of salutary neglect, I talked about that already. Um, uh, slavery continues to grow. I talked about that already. Um, so, you know, not a, a ton in terms of work exchange and technology uh, yet, but uh, we see the cotton gin, Eli Whitney, right? Slavery blasts off. That's going to happen uh, late in this period. Uh, we also see, you know, boycotts, happening uh that's kind of work you know that that is happening economic uh, issues so um the association forming those boycotts of english goods during the revolution culture and society um the, this is another uh, impact on the revolution we talk about causes of the american revolution the enlightenment and enlightenment ideas are big right we talked about common sense I know some of you had that to death. Um, the consent of the governed, John Locke. You know, some of these Enlightenment ideas are what influenced America to say, hey, we, we don't need this government. We can be on our own. We can think outside the box and not just blindly follow the king. That's a big cause of the American Revolution and uh, fighting, you know, this. Uh, women played an important role in the revolution, a support role, right? Um, you know, make sewing things, making... Um, uh, getting supplies and getting them out to the front, not considered citizens yet, you know, so, um, but know about that Republican motherhood, right? That's kind of the idea, especially after the revolution, that mothers are going to be the ones to uh, instill those constitutional values and Republican values in their kids. And I say Republican as Republic, you know, as this new country. So, um, you know, I, I kind of had a whole thing planned um, to go over kind of the history of, of African Americans and the history of women throughout the course. Um, you know, I've kind of thrown that out, something I can share if people want that. Um, but yeah, with the change of the AP test, I decided to go a different direction here. But that this is kind of the start of, uh, for women, uh, that Republican motherhood idea. Migration and settlement. Uh, so pushing west, you know, to frontier land. We even see that before the revolutions start to happen. Uh, you know, the Northwest Ordinance is going to be one that allows for some of that movement. Um, you know, I even put uh, Proclamation of 1763 in a different category, but that can apply here of blocking off. You know, uh, England blocks off 
the land past the Appalachians so they don't have to deal with the Native Americans. Um, Western conflict with the Native Americans is, is a key theme here, and uh, Africans imported as slaves, you know, that is a migration and settlement, right? Uh, so think, think of some of the rebellions, you know, Shays' Rebellion, right? Um, in Virginia was a, a lot about um, conflict with the Native Americans that the Virginia governor was trying to make peace and, you know, uh, Shea and his men, farmers, were, you know, trying to kind of go after that, cause this rebellion, and it causes more issues for Native Americans. Um, the, the battle of fallen timbers and that, that fight over kind of that, that Northwest land, uh, the Treaty of Greenville basically gave America the ability to take any land that they want um, and, and establish that. So Native American questions, I, I, you know, I'm not sure if you'll get, if you might, you could get a DBQ kind of overarching that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't think you'll have something completely focused on Native American issues. Uh, maybe something that's focused on minority issues in general, but it's a geography and the environment. Um, you know, so the end of freely available land in the East by 1800, going to be pretty packed up East. Um, and so people are going to make a push West start to farm, find that land, right? This is the, the Western uh, thesis, the, the frontier thesis that we talked about. Uh, farmers and elites in cities um, conflict ideologically. Once again, Hamilton Jefferson ideas kind of conflicting here. So um, the Whiskey Rebellion is a good one right here in Pittsburgh, right? Um, the excise tax that gets uh, kind of pushed by Alexander Hamilton, um, it ends up being passed and go to collect that um that, that tax and the, the tax collector, um, uh, Neville gets chased out, gets tar, you know, tarred and feathered and George Washington sends in troops to put down this rebellion, um, giving that federal power to do so. Finally, America in the world, uh, you know, we emerge as an independent power after the revolution. Uh, we have that alliance with France, but it is going to create some issues. We'll be getting into those European affairs, right? So, Back to that Washington farewell address. Um, the French Revolution and some of the ideas surrounding the French Revolution are a piece of this. Do we do we uh, help? You know, do we go in there? Um, that was a big question in that Washington administration. Obviously, we do, he decides not to get involved. Let's let them go. Um, the XYZ affair in John Adams' presidency, right? When uh, the French expect us to, to pay to even talk to them and starts to sour that relationship. Um, so, you know, the, the, with some of the issues with Spain and all that. So, um, once again, not probably a strong foreign affairs yet, but something we'll get into. So, there's kind of circle period three. Main focus uh, is definitely in the, the, the political and the national identity aspects, right? The Arcs Confederation, Constitution, uh, and the Revolution, French and Indian War. I think those are kind of the big things. So if you have questions on this, once again, office hours uh, will happen 1 to 2 p.m. Thursdays. Um, I'll, I'll make a new post on Wednesday or Thursday setting that up. Uh, but you can post in the comments in Google Classroom. I'll answer it within the week. Um, you can shoot me an email, shallum at kosd.org. I'll be happy to answer those questions. And uh, hopefully this will help you out. Uh, and, you know, links to the cheat sheet that I just went over um, are below for you. So best of luck. You know, take get some work on the pre-writing for the DBQ this week, and you should be good to go for a circle period three. I think this is one that I know is far back, but I think it's one that um, you've had before and probably are pretty clear on. So I'll see you soon.